Yo, what's up, Defcon? Okay, we have Daniel here. Uh, I can call you Daniel, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we have Daniel here. We've been seeing him kind of just walk by, sneakily scanning with his little antenna sticking out of his backpack. And we said, hey, Daniel, come on over here. Let's take a look at what you got with your hardware. What are you scanning for here in Vegas? And what's going on with Defcon? Daniel, uh, you want to tell us a little bit about what you're doing? Yeah, so mostly what I'm doing is scanning for the aircraft positions in the area, mostly because of how close DEFCON is to uh, Harry Reid International Airport. Uh, so I'm able to get the air traffic control uh, and mostly the aircraft positions uh, live and in real time uh, and for free, pretty much. So this is the kind of thing I see a lot of times on, on Twitter and just shared around is like, uh, obviously, the the public information of Elon Musk's jet or Taylor Swift flying around from place to place to place, and then we all get to see how much jet fuel is being used and wasted from one place to another. Um, is that right? Is that kind of the the vibe here? Well, what do you do with the information? Uh, I just like looking at like pretty much the air traffic around me, seeing oh this is where this aircraft is going, and this aircraft might be above me right now, and it, it's going to, for instance, Denver. It's just nice information to have, very nice hobby for me at least. Absolutely, I think it's super cool. And it sounds like uh, there's a, a community of people that also share share information. So it's it's kind of a, there, there's a, a community sharing so that other people have access to the information you can provide, say in Vegas, but then somebody in Denmark also might be sharing uh, real-time data of, of uh, airplanes or aircraft. Is mm -hmm. that right? Is that kind of how it works? Yeah, pretty much. That's super cool. and. Can you visually see, um, like, how do you, how are you able to visually see the information once you get it, um, or once you bring it down from the air? So some um, software that people use are, ha they have built-in scopes, which are pretty much top-down views uh, with a map that shows you the pretty much location of where the aircraft is, showing you its altitude, its speed, uh, the direction that it is, the call sign, so you can see this aircraft is an Alaskan Airlines flight to uh, Colorado that is 19,000 feet in the air going this speed or whatever, pretty much. That's super interesting. Would you say, I mean, obviously I look up in the sky, I can see some airplanes here and there all the time. Is, are there a lot more aircraft flying overhead than we think, than, than what we can visually see? And is it, I, I, I would just find that interesting too, to be able to like look around and actually get data and specifically where it is. Like, are there a lot more aircraft flying above us than we can see right now? Yeah, pretty, yeah, because a lot of them are, might be covered up by clouds or they might be so high up that you pretty much would just see a speck or think that might just be a cloud even. Yeah. What about satellites? Um, do you track satellites at all as well? Yeah, so there are some software like Gpredict, for example, that is able to tell, or it's able to get the location of where the satellite is uh, and all track the frequency that it is broadcasting at and you're able to uplink or downlink that uh, data and be able to, uh, let's say, record it and send that over to a software called SatDump, which is able to convert uh, the frequency and uh, the data that you recorded over to an image, for example, and be able to show your friends, hey, this is a image of a, an image that was sent from a weather satellite, for example. Do we know, when we get that information, say, from X, Y, or Z satellite, do we know which satellite it is? Is that information included of, like, what company, if it's, like, a, whatever, this is a meta satellite, or whatever it is? Do we ha get that information as well? Yeah, so m most of the major ones are, like, uh, NOAA and Mediostat and Meteor, um, and those, respectively, have, are well documented on the frequency and they're mostly government funded so you pretty much can just go online and see what frequency it is and even with g it, will, it already knows that the frequency and where that location is because it is able it automatically updates the positioning file that it has to where that satellite is so it can predict it even if you're offline Got it. So, I mean, yeah, once you get kind of get the routine, mm -hmm. then it's it's all predictive at that point, and you know where the orbit, where in orbit it will be at any given time. Yeah, yeah. but sometimes you might need to occasionally update it just in case, because it can be off by a few minutes maybe at some point if you keep it out of date for long enough. So tell me, are there is there any information that you would say is 
anything you've learned that the common public might not know from the type of research you've been doing? Um, so a lot of, I'd say, depending on the county, you're able to pretty much use a antenna or an SDR, which I have, um, as a police tracker. Some counties and some departments might have unencrypted channels, which you're able to listen in on and maybe get a general scope of there is an event going on over here, and that's why there are police over here, for example. Again, real time. And that is that different than just, say, a police scanner? Uh, what do you mean? Like, well, I mean, uh, and they, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm riffing with you here, but you know, I know that we have the like a regular police scanner where you can track whatever chatter going on um, in, in with emergency services. Is is that what we're referencing right now? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. And um, what about, uh, let's say, something where you can't necessarily uh, things that are less common? Are there? Have you found any? Thing that we the public should know about is there anything that you've uncovered um, so at the beginning of the Ukraine war um, a lot of the Russian communication was done through unencrypted radio channels so you were able to con uh, connect to web SDRs which are website versions of SDR software so you're able to listen to the frequencies are at that location. So you're able to tune into, let's say, a SDR that's in Germany, for example, and you are able to listen to Russian war communications at that time. And since, and since, I guess they've switched from SDRs to something more secure? Um, I believe a few, I think at least a year after the war, uh, they started using encrypted channels uh, for radios. So. <laughs> That's kind of insane that it took a year to switch to encrypted channels. And was that sensitive information or...? What? Yeah, so it kind of disclosed um, like military uh, locations um, and pretty much plans even. And there was a general community at the time for reporting all that stuff to uh, Ukraine at that time. Wow. Well, that's pretty, uh, that's definitely something that you've uncovered there. Is there anything else that the public should be aware of that in your in-depth experience and hobby playing, shall we say, um, of playing with computers and signals, is there anything else you've found out there? Uh, I believe that is all. I mean, I, I'm, I, you know, I just like to push the envelope here, but I can't help but ask because uh, the last one's pretty interesting, uh, finding um, pretty important what should be encrypted information uh, just right out there in the open, and you're pulling it down from all the way across the world. So, uh, yeah, you know, let's take a look at your hardware real quick because I, I just see these, you know, little cricket antennas sticking out of your backpack, and you so so sneakily were walking by pointing those antennas at me earlier and I couldn't help but ask what you were scanning. Yeah, so I have pretty much a uh, dipole set up and I just have it connected at the moment to a SDR Blog V4. Here. And I have it going through a FM and AM amplifier just to bring up the lower frequencies um, up more so that I'm able to actually uh, receive them better. Got it. So, and then all of these plug directly into computer and are just, they're just scanning directly with software, correct? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Because SDR uh, stands for Software Defined Radio. Uh, so I'm able to pretty much load up either Linux, Windows, or even Mac OS and just be able to plug this in and it will work. Have you uncovered anything here at DEF CON um, that I, should be known by the public? I heard that the, uh, I believe the Ham Village was sending out signals uh, throughout the day and they were pretty much images um, and stuff. That's cool. That's definitely cool. Well, um, man, I appreciate your time. I think the most, by far, the most interesting thing was <laughs> Uh, intercepting messages from from Russia I think that's really insane um, as most of the people watching this will agree maybe uh, but Daniel I appreciate your time and I'm glad uh, we got to sit here and have this conversation because you are quite an interesting character my friend thank you
Keep up the good work. Be relentless, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel.